Venus specifically is ready for that Estes ban. Echo seems to have a uh, play out of their playbook as well. There's so much to play with now if you're Echo, right? On it's insane. Fredrin first pick, the carry was responded with. That was a good pick by them, but then, hey, Echo banned the Estes and the Diggy. Usually you'd see the, the carry, the Kaja here. Kaja was open, they also answered that backline threat that uh, Blacklist have yeah. with their own uh, here in the Lapu Lapu, they can dive. This is such a good composition already for them, and you can see what they want to ban next. It's Barats. Every single time, they understand who to ban for. In game number one, it was Venus, who was targeted. Game number two, you can see a mix. Now, they noticed, hey, we picked up a hero for Wise, and he hasn't picked up a hero in the first phase. It's time to really go down and ban him out. How do you feel about this coat, LaFell? Wise, who's confident in winning the M4 World Championship. Again, because he's the only one who didn't use any assassins. He has a thousand confidence, but how is that gonna come into play here? Because that's a lot of non-assassins being banned out, specifically the Barat, and then his Frederick's taken away from him as well. I think what he's really trying to convey is that I don't bend towards the meta. The meta bends towards me. That's why he's really confident because people can tell him all day that, oh, the Ling is good, Hayabusa is broken and everything like that. And he's like, sure, but my name is Wise. I choose what I want to play. And now looking at Barats and Akai getting banned, what is he going to play? But I will say, I'm not actually looking at Wise to really change the game. If he does, then that's great. I'm actually looking at Edward because I kind of feel like Edward is the key going up against this kind of kind of draft, seeing the Kaja, seeing the Laut Lapu, seeing the Frederick. He should be the, 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 the space maker and the initiator for Blacklist International to make sure that Oheb and Oh My Venus have optimal way to actually go into a fight. Thing is, Blacklist International, they've tried that, right? They gave Benedetta a playmaking hero to Edward. In the second game, they gave him glue to buy a little more time. Play as a distract. Oh no, sorry, Joy, my bad. Uh, distract, right? But it didn't work both times. Now, what's open for him is that Benedetta, right? Wise is gonna pick up that box here first. I was actually thinking the Valentina in the jungle. We haven't seen it in a long time, but with the Kanja having that divine judgment, it's a good ult to take. Benny still wants to play that Brody, knows that up against the carry, he actually has a bigger advantage here compared to last game in terms of just laning. If anything, since the Valentina is not banned, might go into the hands of Echo, oh. but it looks like Coach Treb and Coach Tekta are reading into it. I think they're afraid that Bonchan and Master of Basics are ready for it. Because again, it's wide open, right? But you need a good level of burst mm -hmm. to make Echo's lineup work. I think the better option here would be the Lilia, right? You get a bit more sustainability. You already have such a good composition to dive in, but it does seem like they... Whoa! 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 No, not the Valentina, what? not the Lilia. They want to go in! Dude, it's like, let's end the this belt. game as quickly as possible. They want to go in. Dude, I'm loving this. Okay, so Edward picks up the Yuzong. And again, this is what I want to see because he has to be the one to dictate the fight. He has to go in. But man, oh man, the burst. Gaja picks wow. up anyone. You got the Gushin. You got the Brody. I, okay, here's the thing. I love the draft. <laughs> Works or not. I love the draft. Yep, this is a throwback to about two or three months ago when MPL Philippines, MYID were in season 10. Gushin was a hot pick. Gushin went through a career renaissance, was picked right out of ranked games into the pro scene. And here it looks like Echo are going for match point with it. Will they be able to do that? Blacklist have a solid lineup as well. Signature picks all across. What's this Yuzhong gonna do in the hands of Agent Zero? Is that enough? of a instrument, of a tool to draw a line straight into the backline because what's the backline even for Echo? It's just Benny. Dude, honestly, I kind of feel like it is enough because just make sure everyone is close enough together because you're just trying to distract. You're letting everyone else do the damage. We'll see how fast Echo can go and how Blacklist answers back. This is game three. This is for the M4 World Championships. This is the first Gushin pick in M4 too, right? Fun yep. fact. Hey, Right during the break, when it was the analyst segment, me and Leo, we were talking about it. We were like, hey, Echo in game three. They got a 2-0 lead. What are they supposed to do? Don't experiment too much in the draft. But here they are, <laughs> experimenting in the draft again. In the world, at the world stage. My dude, this is insane. It's Gushin's debut. I fully trust Coach Treb and Coach Tic Tac and Echo, all right? They're, they're putting on yeah. a show for us. No, I mean, like, 
it's an experiment in our eyes. Yes. They probably True. trained this for quite a while because, sure. again, looking at Blacklist, look at what happened in game number one. Look at what happened in game number two. They kind of just forget about Wise. They forget about Oh My Venus. And in a sense, they forget about Edward as well. As long as you get Oheb and Haji, it's all right. You, you probably don't even mind if Sanji dies, if he can get both Haji as well as, Ed, uh, as, well as Oheb. So this is fine. And again, looking at Edward, I'm still looking at him to kind of carry because what he has to do is to start a fight, collect everyone together. That's it. Uh-huh. And they're going to be able to do that, but at the midway point. Because again, you're also waiting for Oheb. You're waiting for this carry to hit a power spike because it's a tough way playing a carry into a Brody. It's very tough. The laning here, the matchup is not good for carry at all, right? You're going to be zoned away from your mini waves constantly. You need your Lolita or your Roma, your jungler to help out to break that freeze. And right now you're seeing that, right? Oheb is already getting zoned out of his own lane. The Brody has so much to say, and this is where Echo have been utilizing Benny Kinsey's stellar M4 performance. They're always playing around the gold lane, but now it's a turtle. Oh, and also the XP lane. Look at this. Sanford and Sanji pressuring Haji and Edward. Oh, turtle very low. Wow, Carl TZ steals it away from Blacklist International like it's nothing. Just walks up like a Chad and uses the retribution. I just got to say, because we didn't really see, because we're looking at the turtle, I want to talk about the micromanagement of the wave, because Sanji, he sacrificed his own wave, and look at his Yaoi engages. Divine Josh, one of the Petra fly from Sanji. Now to the Manon Blast, going to be popped in here, but Yaoi's going to be able to get away from that one. Not for long as Wise is able to find the kill back. A Romer traded in for the mid laner. Still, Echo takes the trade. Love what we're saying. No, I'm mean, just saying because during that fight, Yaoi didn't even dare to go close to the turtle because he was already at level 3. Sanji with the Gushin went to the EXP lane, absorbed some of that minions, while Yaoi secured the entire minion wave in mid, allowed him to get level 4. And we just saw the engagement there, but I want to talk about how Carrie's having a difficult, uh, difficult time. It's going to be more difficult now that Yaoi already has the Divine Judgment, so Oheb, he had a bad time before, it's going to get worse. Oh, and that's why I think... King Wise and Queen V are going ahead alongside Haji. So again, they're, they're, they're leaving Agent Zero here to make the best of this dead lane against Sanford's Lapu Lapu. We're about 30 seconds and a quarter away from a Turtle. Once more, Echo got that handily. There's a lot of burst coming in from the Orcas, giving them a 300, 400 gold lead. And in terms of items, is that enough? Oh, there's a pull! That's the Divine Judgment, and that's all the damage placed on Benny. Not gonna use the torn apart memory just yet. That was a flicker burn in by Venus, and that's a W that Echo wants to take, those small dubs. Yeah, and again, as we said, you're already setting up your own playstyle. Get the level four as quickly as possible. Sure, it was slightly delayed because they went for something in mid, but now you can see they're putting a lot of pressure onto Blacklist International. This is what they've been doing. They're making sure that Blacklist can't stay long in their own lanes. They can't stay long in front of the turrets because they're setting things up. Yaoi is still here. Even if he doesn't go in, just the, 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 the mindset of I could get engaged is very terrifying. Oh, Black Dragon form already. Break it out. It's on to Carl TZ now. And as you can see, Carl TZ is going to be targeted down with a lot of damage. That's going to be the Razor Brad to buy a little bit more time, but he will be slain. Sanji finding Venus. Sanji going to be the target right now. Sanji jumps into the Petrify as well. That's a double kill for Agushin at M4. Sanford knocked out by the Furious side. Yeah, we're going to be able to dodge away right there from the skill shot from Edward. But Edward is going to be targeted down now. Sanji looking for it. Gets it and it's a triple kill. Unofficial, but still a triple kill for the Gushin that's making its debut on the world stage in the Grand Finals. And this propels Echo about a thousand gold ahead and it's just back to business. Carl Tizi making quick work of this turtle. Honestly, in that team fight as well, Oh My Venus had a very good shot of using the Nominum Blast, but then gets cancelled by Yaoi, pulling him to the side, saying, no, 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 my team can handle itself. And Oh My Venus engages on Yaoi, and wow. Yaoi escapes that, using the flicker. But again, it's all all right, because Echo, they're in control. Even in the team fight, they're micromanaging everyone's skills, everyone's ults, to make sure that they don't get punished, to make sure that the Orcas are always going to be the one getting those kills. And because of that, that pressure in the bottom lane and the relative absence of Blacklist from those responses in the bottom after the turtle take, they got pushed on bottom. Oh, it's a fight up top. 
Haji gonna be stunned up. Has it for the air strike. Sanji gonna be taken long. Taken down. Shut down by Haji. But Haji falls as well. Sanfo! Richter's lowered! He knows exactly what he was doing! He finds two on the board! Not even the observers can believe it! It's Owen Ham up top for the House of Highlights and Sanford just as quickly rotates down bottom. Wise, they're not done with him, they're still going! The torn apart memory slays Wise as they pick up the tier one in the gold lane. 3,000 gold lead. Conversion through the roof for Echo here. They're taking trades, they're taking bodies, taking turrets. Now 30 seconds away from the turret. Where does Blacklist find an angle for a comeback? Okay, now we're looking on my Venus is gonna get punished. Now you see him, now you don't! Two members disappearing from out of nowhere. Oh, have dealing the damage on the Sanford who's still gonna be able to get away for a bit. Shut down, picked up, and Blacklist International strike back. So what I saw just now, and I kind of think of the same thing, Blacklist, they gotta stay inside the jungle of Echo because they need to apply pressure and they need vision. Now they don't have both because again, we talked about it before the game even starts, how Echo is playing. They're pushing one lane, try to get two turrets, and then, they, oh, before that, O'Hare gets caught. Oh, oh, here, Carl T, you're gonna be able to find that. O'Hare falling in the gold lane. Carl TZ backing off. Edward still wants to commit with a picture petrify and the Fury's dive. Now Sanford on the back line. Getting the stun down, but not gonna be able to find it just yet. Haji with wings by wings and the flicker out. Benny gonna be caught here. Stunned up and taken down. Sanford jumping in again. Why still taking, soaking all the damage in? That's oh! gonna be Sashi though. Coming in out of nowhere. Coming in again onto Venus. Not gonna be able to find it just yet. Why still able to get out for a bit with the shield unity? And he gets the safety. It's a two for one in favor of Blacklist. All right, so there's a clap back. Blacklist, given that Echo had to split up their priorities. Turtle says Carl TZ, no fight, they say. And they're still going. Sanford again. Jumps in, finds Haji. Oh, have trying to melt them down, but it's not gonna be enough as he is actually able to just get the damage out. Oh, have it now. Gonna be targeted down so, so low. He flickered out of there, but he's still gonna be caught. Yeah, we find the divine judgment. No commitment just yet. Echo decide to pull back. All right, touche. Touche. We pull a treaties for now. Yep. Eight minutes in, 3K head Echo. What's the item game looking like? The item game is huh. just showing Sanford. He only has the Bloodless Axe as a damage item and the Dominant's Eyes just for armor. But again, looking at that, Sanford really should have died. But because Dominant's Eyes now lowers the attack speed of your opponent, so Oheb doesn't have maximum attack speed at that point, and he just out heals Oheb. Oh man, you can see the carry is just so behind. Corrosion Staff, Golden Staff, he needs that with the nature, but he also needs an Athena at this point, right? There's so much damage output that Echo can deal, and Blacklist are just not ready for that kind of dive. Yep, uh, it looks like Echo evolved their strategy from game two, when it's not the amount of damage you have, it's where you put it, given the uh, skill shots that Echo have to get in to be able to get these kills. Now 13 to six, it just shows that they are playing off of momentum. Oh, look at this, Oheb. Gonna be stunned up, gonna oh! be taken down with a total of memory. Flicker out by Benny QT is wise, he's looking to re-engage with Edward as well. That's a stun coming in. Benny still able to escape, and he breaks the entire team. The match of fire, the Fury's dive connecting on a Benny QT, and Xiaoyi jumps in. Benny's still alive! Go easy, toss them up! It's a double kill for Santi! Echo Philippines, the house of highlights! And it's just Oh My Venus left. It's as free a lord as it gets for Echo. Barreling on forward, 5k ahead. LaFell, how does Blacklist come back? Blacklist did everything right. That was not a mistake. Like, they managed to get Betty Cutie. Betty Cutie dashes away. He still got caught. And Blacklist, they still lost. Yowie was able to pull Edward away. Like, again, it's not that Blacklist. They did the engage wrong. They did everything right and it still wasn't enough. That's very discouraging. This breaks the whole concept of the metagame that is box-centric, and it's all about geometry because Echo aren't playing with any clear lines here. They're playing from a point-to-point -point basis, right? Yaoi point and click, Sanji point and click, Benny point and click. Carl is the only one really setting up where Echo can fight, and they always find the right places. I honestly don't understand how Sanji keeps getting the hits as well. But right now, Blacklist fights back. Oh, they find a kill onto the jungler. Carl T is gonna fall. 
Yaoi looking for a re-engage as the Lord marches down in the bottom lane. Sanji picking up the tier 2 in the mid lane. Blacklist International micromanaging the waves properly. Getting it down. Still, 7,000 gold lead for Echo. Wise opening up the map. Gets the shield unity down, but will be caught on the Divine Judgment. Venus coming in, helping his jungler. Now as Benny QT is going to be able to get Petrified oh! down. That's going to be Sanji who finds the unstoppable in the back lines with Sanford as well. The San San duo on the back line. Wise going to be turning it down. Sanji not able to connect just yet. You held your breath there. Edward now running away. Yaoi still dishing the damage out of Sanford. Comes in again. Oh! And Benny with the follow-up to finish him off. That sword spike was about an inch away from Wise. If Sanji had it hit, would have been over for King Wise. But that doesn't change the fact that this Lord, Luminous Lord, coming up in about a minute and change, should be lethal. Oh my Venus drops, the Luminous Blast is still going! That's gonna be Feather Air Strike onto Yaoi, yeah, still gonna be able to get out. Athena Shield popped in with Immortality as well, his Apart Memory will be thrown out. Sanford falling to the hands of Oheb, as he is able to find that kill, but it's just a one for one Echo decides to back off, base turret still up, except that top side. So in the defense, Blacklist had their priorities split up, take down members of Echo, clear the waves, something's gotta give. That's that inhibitor up top, that's permanent damage. Yeah, right now, Echo, they've already set up their checkmate because the Lord is gonna come up. That is going to be something that Blacklist have to contest. Now the question is, can they even contest it? And LaFell, to add to that, it's in the long lane. It's in the opposite lane that Lord is in. It's, it's very clear, it's inevitable that Penny's gonna try to do the same thing. I mean, we talked about this. This is how they play. They set up the map to their own favor to make sure they have multiple ways to actually win the game. They can win through a team fight. They can win through getting Oheb, through getting uh, Haji, or just going straight, beeline to the king, dropping down the base itself. So this is beautiful coming in from Echo. It's more or less the same thing, but executed in a different way. They're playing with inevitability. Echo have played to a brilliant situation right now. They're 7k ahead. They're making easy work of this Lord and Wise checking in. V pulls the conceal. They've committed a lot of resources here. That's the not Blast. Not finding anyone. Yaoi looking for the Divine Judgment. Able to find Wise as they try to burst down the Lord. Lord to be secured right now. That's going to be the front by Sanji to buy a little bit more time again. Benny! Oh! Again, a fight that's torn apart memory. Yahweh's looking for more. That's been the petrify and the furious dive used up. Sanford jumping in with Bravest Fighter. Oh my god! Sanford! Benny! Sandy! Caldini! Yahweh! They keep styling on Blacklist! That's four for one. Lord as well going over to Echo. They're gonna push bottom lane and they are going to threaten the game and they catch Oheb. Again, under the base. Oheb very low. It's match point for Echo. The world champions have never been pushed to the limit. Not like this. Echo Express are pummeling on through. They are at match point. Here's the thing, man. What are we watching? We're watching history. Defending champions. Will they be able to defend? Because again, it's, it's not like reverse sweep doesn't happen. It does happen. Even though Echo, it looks like they're very oppressive. It's not game over because again, We've seen time and time again, in fact, M1, reverse sweep happened. It can still happen here, but I gotta say, as an analyst, I'm watching the game, game one, game two, game three, they're more or less the same. Go to one lane, grab two turrets, set up the checkmate in all three games.